I think one day when you are ready, when you feel and think that it is time, I will vote <laughs> every day for you. I'm glad you're not voting. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with South African football at the moment is nobody can, you know, tell us what does life look like beyond Dr. Denny Jordan? Whether Dr. Jordan is removed now or, you know, he's ousted because of what's happening with the, with, 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 with the Hawks, or maybe he serves his full term now, finishes, and, uh, you know, bows out amicably. Mm. What does the future, therefore, after that look like for South African football? We know what's going on with Ria at the moment. Mm -hmm. What does the future look like? Let's stop bringing Lucas Khatebe into it. I think Lucas Khatebe has made it uh, plain and simple by what he's done, which is nothing, to show that he's not interested in that sort of giving back. He's not interested in that sort of influence as far as South African football is concerned. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think Lucas does a great job in the corners that he gives back, in the corners that he does his influence for South African football. He does very well in those. But as far as presidency of the association is concerned, I don't think that that's where Lucas's mind is. I think we're the ones that are forcing him there. Therefore, that forces us to say, in the leadership that we know, in business structural leadership, where do we go? Yeah, no, no, please close, <laughs> please close the mic. 12 after the hour, 6, we'll look back at NetBank Cup results as well. Looking forward to your calls just after um, a quarter to on 86 2160 WhatsApp on 60 Exactly 14 after the hour, 6 on the Mighty Metro FM. We're about to go in the matters of the weekend, but very quickly... Uh, Tavik, yes. the principal, yeah. welcome. Dr. Lawani, what do you have for us? Uh, uh, we have number one, uh, Mufukeng. Uh, Mufukeng did something on the weekend. Orlando that, Pirates Mufukeng. Yes, Orlando okay. Pirates Mufukeng, where he pushed the goalkeeper uh, when the ball was out of play. So, Sizom Kali. Okay. Yeah. And then the next one, we have uh, TS Galaxy scored a goal. Uh, first goal by Sandor Lukovic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need to talk about that goal. All right, we'll get into that and so much more. But firstly, let's begin in tennis news. Carlos Alcaraz defending his title at Indian Wells. Defense title is uh, is never easy. I think it's uh, even more more difficult if uh, it is a Master 1000. Uh, I'm really happy to to show uh, a really good tennis uh, this this tournament. It's a really special place for me, and uh, yeah, really happy to to be able to defend the title here in Indian Wells. And then, of course, uh, there is the matter of Iga Swiatek, who won the women's as well. Do I have that clip there? Okay, we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's move on now to the FA Cup. It was a big game for Manchester United taking on Liverpool. Many betters would have put everything behind Liverpool on this one, but it was Man United that was triumphant in what many are calling the return of Fergie time. This year now from Jurgen Klopp, who says they were really, really good. I don't know in the moment if he can play the same game again. It was a really good game. I, I, I would say, I would call this game the start, that they were really, really good, really good. Um, and that's these aspects we try to, to bring on the pitch again. But how I said, um, the opponent had a full week to prepare. They might do a few things differently. I mean, it was one of those for the books. It's one of those games that you'll never, ever forget. It was a memorable game. Brilliant indeed. I watched it the day after because, you know, I've taken... Um, uh, of celibacy against Manchester United at the moment. Ten Hag, he had uh, something to say as well. He says uh, games don't come any bigger. It's uh, yes, some games are bigger than others. That's definitely, and I think Manchester United, Liverpool, that's always a big game. It's a, it's a special game, absolutely. It was a very special game. But speaking of special games, there were games here um, in the NetBank Cup. Let's begin perhaps with goals from Orlando Pirates. Four of them were scored by the Buccaneers. <laughs> And the Bluetooth device is connected. Dino, give me the Fatuka. Muna Pule Sale, Muna Pule Sale, Karadini, Lala Lechanta. Muna Pule Sale, Muna Pope, Muna Pope, is a little more or a Munana, Muhawa Piella. Three or on the Pirates, not a hungry lens. Polish for what you are. If I take a Polar woman to get it, in a Polar to get it, Jamba Artavale. 
Careful! 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 Hey, man! <laughs> Come get her, lad, JR! Ah, JR also beat. Yeah, my dream. Four, my brother, I want to be strong, can't you? Here, can you touch JR? I bet you want to start a ball, a ball, no? Yes, but she's not alone, no parade. Take off, take off, my boss. Still keeping with the NetBank Cup, let's hear now from Rulana Mukwena, who said something that reminded a lot of people of what Pepe said before. He says that Sundowns are the only team that loses trophies because the others win them. Unfortunately, Sundowns is the only team that can lose trophies. The others win trophies. Sundowns loses trophies. And that's the truth. But that's the space we have to be in. And uh, it comes with the territory of being nominally Sundowns and being a big team. You, you lose things, you don't gain and win things. Well, hey, man, uh, he's done very well, has uh, Coach Ryan McGuinn, arresting a lot of players from that Mamelodi Sundowns team, still coming out with a victory versus Marysburg United. Gavin Hunt, though, he says that no team in the PSL is doing what they are doing. Chandre was just, Mr. Campbell was fantastic this past weekend, was an 18-year-old, wasn't he? I mean, there's no team in South Africa who have done what we've done. Um, they've played a lot of football. Um, and obviously, we have to make a few decisions. And these stuff, you know, so we, you know, there's a trial and error and trial. I mean, the two that came on today, the one hasn't played disky football. He plays under 18 football. He's never been on an aeroplane. So, you know, these are things that I've got to, you know, there's a lot involved. Never stayed in a, never stayed in a hotel. So, uh, you know, don't eat that, eat that, don't eat like do this, do that. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to going on here. Oh man, I gotta love coaches at the moment. I look forward to press conferences just because you've got Rulani, you've got Gavin, you've got so much as far as that is concerned. Now you've got the return of uh, Steve Compeller as well, so it's always going to be exciting on Mondays. But lastly, let's go to a matter that concerned me a lot. It was uh, uh, Makaula collapsing in the Rolanda Pirates game. Here's Jose Ribeiro speaking about his collapse. It was a shocking moment for all of us. Obviously, it's one of those situations that you sometimes. Unfortunately, you have to the opportunity to leave yourself close. We used to see it in, in TV sometimes, and today was was our chance to to have that feeling. I mean, I can tell you, it's not nice. But uh, thanks to the doctors and and the te- technical assistants, I think they managed to stabilize him because there was a there was a difficult moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got. Uh, I think he still goes by a board member out at Boxing South Africa. Um, the man who sometimes also wears a football hat. We'll speak to him about football today. Are you still at, BC, at BSA? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I've, got, I've got a matter of one million. Uh, I, I, I played cricket when I was growing up, and uh, there was a rule that before, at least, you know, you must at least give the guy a softy. <laughs> uh, you can't give a bouncer as the opening. <laughs> Now you're giving me a bouncer as an opening goal. That, that was such a softie. Goal, eh? That was such a softie. I mean, I thought you would give me that a was bit an of a softie breaker. to take, a take, to take uh, you know, no, to put a six on it. Breaker. And yeah. there you are, trying to bowl me, like you give me a yoka. First ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready after the hour six. Luke Lolo September is sitting with us uh, for the next couple of minutes. We're going to be speaking all things cap, but also we're going to bring it home a little bit. The whole of last week, we had a former NEC member that sat here and told us about, taught a lot of South Africans about what a septic tank is. Because something that is paid for, for what, six, 600 uh, every 10 years we hear from the experts that came onto the show, Safa pays 600,000 rands a month for it. I mean, it was one of those things that uh, bowled us all here. But that's not the details we're going to be speaking to Little Close September about. He wouldn't know anything about septic tanks. He's all the way in Cairo, in South Africa at the moment. Did you catch some games over the weekend? Yeah, I actually, um, I mean, I, I watch a lot of South African football. Eh? Uh, even when From I'm Cairo? Here. <laughs> everywhere because so, I, I travel everywhere I, I oh, watch okay. a lot of football I watched the, the Nedbank Cup this past weekend um, in, in between basketball I was also watching the, the Sundowns a little bit of the Sundowns match yeah. and I watched Pirates play uh, Hungry Lion I play. I watched the game on Friday so I, I, I watch a lot of uh, South African football whenever I can you know I looked at I looked at and the question that we asked up at the show and is something that we've spoken about here a lot to say Dr. Denis Jordan regardless of what's happening at the moment mm. Um, with with, with uh, the Hawks. Let's put that aside and say, yeah. you know, he serves out his term and uh, bids farewell to his seat as presidency at Safa. I then look at the pool of people that are available in front of us. Uh, over the last week or so in South Africa, the name Dr. Patrice Mutsipa has come up a lot. And you know and I know that, and this is something that I just like to get out there from a hierarchy point of view, from somebody who 
has been sitting in the seats that you're sitting in. It is a downgrade of, I don't know what proportions, to move from where he is now to mm-hmm. come to South African football to attempt to fix that. That's something that's never going to happen. Yeah, I mean, look, Andila, <laughs> first of all, you have to look at what Dr. Petris Mutsepe has done at CAF. First of all, he's been in South African football. Uh, he's been at Sundowns, I think, for 20, well, before CAF, he was at Sundowns for 20 odd years. Uh, built a great brand, you know, uh, demonstrated not only his vision, but on so, uh, because vision alone is not enough, but demonstrated his I can do attitude there. Uh, went to CAF about three years ago um, and, uh, and did an amazing job. Uh, I think the other question of what happens in South Africa is a different question altogether. And maybe we shouldn't get easy solutions for complex problems, you know. And uh, and I think sometimes we bypass problems uh, and think of easy solutions. Ah, who can we get? I mean, he's at CAF at the moment. And he's a CAF president looking after the affairs of CAF. And there is no question at the moment that uh, Dr. Patrice Motsepe uh, has delivered um, what is by far the most prosperous era in African football. Mm. And um, now the South Africans must look at the South African problems, the people in South Africa. Maybe not, um, maybe we should talk about the younger generation. That That's them who should be debating this whole thing of what is the kind of future that we want to see. And uh, and then we lean on these people who are, who we remain entirely, eternally grateful to uh, Dr. Mutsepe, Dr. Koza, Dr. Mutawung, Dr. Jordan, and all this, Dr. Oliphant. Unfortunately, they are still around us. So the younger generation must grow a little bit uh, of courage uh, and, and, and be more focused on, on, on trying to find solutions for the future, the future that we want, because the current people, leaders, when they were our age group, this is the conversations that they were having. So I, mm. I think... We should not necessarily try and get these easy solutions of, um, you know, let's get Dr. Patrice Motsepe from CAF to South Africa. No, I mean, not necessarily. That's not a practical solution anyway. Uh, there is a different solution, I think, and it's, it's going to come from the, the younger generation that is more vested in the future. I just had to get that out there because, I mean, he was trending even for that. I saw. Um, and and I just it was one of those things where, you know, when you say no, guys, but look at where he is versus what we're talking about. It's, it's just something that needed to be cleared out there mm-hmm. so that we can have further conversations. Joining us, Lukola September, Head of Broadcasting and Commercial at uh, CAF. Uh, congratulations. I was in Abidjan uh, for a little bit. Got to witness, I mean, I've been a part of a World Cup. I've been a part of, of many Afghans, including what we've hosted here. What we saw in Abidjan in January, February, in my books and that of many other was number one, the best tournament ever hosted on African soil yeah. as far as African football is concerned. The stats, yeah. But more so, and the stats say so, yeah. but more so, more importantly than just, you know, the football on the field, the refereeing and the usage of VAR, um, yeah. the people that came in numbers, the atmosphere and the host country doing what they did. It was also successful in terms of money. Something Dr. Patrice Mutsipe once again preaches all the time and he shows it at sundowns and he shows it where he's been. Yeah. Money. Yeah. I, I think, Andile, you know, I've, I've been fortunate. I, I've been in, in, in football now um, for the last um, 17 years, I think. Uh, and, and, and one of the things I've seen is that it's about leadership. You know, you have the right leader in place, <laughs> the place is going to be in shape. I mean, I, I spent some years at the PSL, um, and you could see with the type of leadership the PSL had and the results that were there off the field. Now, come to Kev. I mean, uh, in AFCON 2021, seven sponsors. 20 AFCON Cote d'Ivoire, 20, uh, 17 sponsors. And, and AFCON 21, um, 66 TV stations. AFCON 2023, you've got uh, 110 uh, media rights holders. And the, the, the revenues are just crazy out of this world. The TV audiences, AFCON 2021, were about just under 500 million, right? Right now, we are sitting in crazy numbers. We are way over a billion. Now, wow. it's about leadership. It's about, for me, I am quite completely convinced. And, and a lot of people, I mean, I, I read in the Guardian, the UK Guardian, they said, Africa's miracle. And I got a little bit offended because I thought to myself, it's not a miracle. Yeah. Uh, I remember when um, Dr. Patrice Motsepe assembled the directors at CAF, and he asked the question to some of them who were running the key roles, Samson Adamus and others and others, to say, what does... I've told people we're going to have the best AFCON ever. But what does the best mean for each and every one of you? 
you must go there. And you know, I mean, I, I, I remember reading somewhere that, you know, you know, when uh, Motsepe is going to Kef, he's just going to be there for 5% time. I wish he was there 5% because we wouldn't have meetings <laughs> up until early hours of the day, right? But that's the amount of detail he puts into this whole thing. And for so me... So he's a hands-on president of the association. I wish sometimes he was not. The association... <laughs> and I ask this, Lukola, because the association is based, its head offices in Egypt. Yeah. His home yeah. is in South Africa. Yeah. Um, his business travels take him all around the world. Yes, CAF presidency is one of the things that Dr. Patrice Mutsipe does. He still runs business. Hundred percent. Is Doctor is, is he hands on? Is he there? I sometimes ask myself, where does he get the time? Because I, I mean, I, I I'm just focusing on CAF, and and sometimes my stamina just goes a little bit down. Now, you know, you know, Andy. Um, I'm sure there's a book to be written by other people one day about about this era because this is probably the most exciting era for for young Africans. For me, I look at the people we have in our leadership. Young, I mean, in our in our directors and so on, young guys, and we are so fortunate to have a leader who's so who's not just hands on who sets the tone and holds everyone accountable in that space. I mean, we sometimes, I, I think you've heard stories, right? Uh, we, 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 we have, uh, my, my family has given up on me having holidays um, in the last three years. It's been, this has been the most difficult, most challenging, yet the most fulfilling era in, in my working life. Yes or no? Uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that uh, we hear about <laughs> Dr. Patrice Mutsip and those that work for him. Does he call you at three in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Does he call you at three in the morning? Does Dr. Patrice Musipa have an hour long conversation at three this, in the morning? This is my boss, eh? <laughs> <laughs> look, look, let's get a little bit serious. Uh, the Confederation of African Football sure. um, has shown its concern uh, in respect to the image of football in South Africa mm. due to what happened at the South African Football Association. Um, I think it's uh, over a week and a half ago now when the Hawks Correct. Um, raided. Um, you know, Safa House. Um, there was 1.3 million rands that uh, they're seeking documents to clarify. There's talks of money being stolen or misused. What is the interest in, at, at, at what level and what is the concern that is coming from Safa? We've seen that, uh, from, from CAF rather, we've seen that they have come to Safa and said, guys, you need to explain yourself here. Yeah. What is what is the official word from you guys at CAF on this matter? I, I think what you must remember is that when, when uh, Dr. Patrice Motsepe uh, was campaigning, well, was, 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 was uh, campaigning actually to be the CAF president, he promised, he gave Africans 10 points, which was a 10-point plan. And amongst those was uh, the, the question of integrity, governance, adherence to, 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 to the best practices globally, and to bring integrity to football, right? And, and, and I mean, the, you, the situation of CAF asking questions at SAFA is not a SAFA-only situation. There have been a few federations whereby, member associations whereby there have been questions asked. And Dr. Mutsepe, because rightfully so, he has literally promised to the world, the corporate world, I remember when we arrived at CAF, Everyone was saying, ah, this place, you know, we can't trust the leaders here. This mm. place, too much negativity. This place, whatever it is. Now, what CAF has done, I mean, uh, I think it's, 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 it's now a common, common cause that uh, CAF has written to SAFA. Uh, I'm not going to disclose the contents of that letter because it's between SAFA and CAF, whereby uh, CAF has asked a number of questions to, to, to SAFA in relation to the media reports we've, we've seen uh, from South Africa and also what we saw from statements from the Hawks. And, and these questions are relating to, as I said, the number of the incidents that were mentioned uh, in, in the media recently. Uh, I don't think it's correct for us to talk about this because we don't want to cast suspicions on anyone or anything else. Uh, suffice to say that it's in the interest of, 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 of CAF, it's in the interest of its leader, uh, Dr. Patrice Mutsepe, that football uh, is always seen in a certain light. And I think we are now on a good wicket, so to speak. The momentum is with us. The less We don't want to read about any of these things that are happening that are not necessarily good for football. And we don't want them to happen, not just read about them. We don't necessarily want them to happen. And I, I respect that, but I, I then wonder what jurisdiction and what powers does yes uh, suffer as a as a member of CAF. Yes, but w what could CAF potentially do? What, what what jurisdiction? What powers do you hold over an associate member? Hmm. Well, you know, an, an associate member is is a is a is a is a member of CAF. You know, and um, there are there's a statutes of CAF. 
there are regulations of CAF. And um, if, if you go to the, to the statutes, Article 2 of um, the objectives of CAF, and then you go to Article 7, which will be the obligations of member associations. Now, you, it's clear there that CAF governs football, and amongst other things, it has to safeguard the integrity, the image of, uh, of football. And, and, and SAFA is a member, or SAFA or any other member, there are 54 members, mm. and CAF has a direct interest because um, these members are obviously members of FIFA, as you would know, and uh, all of us, uh, there's a cascading um, order of um, FIFA, regu- Code of Conduct, and regulations. There is the CAF statutes and regulations, and of course, there's the member associations which are part of this. It's in the direct interest of, 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 of CAF in accordance to the regulations. Uh, for them to to us not only to suffer as I said, uh, there's been several instances in the continent whereby I'm sure I mean it's relevant to, to to the South Africans now because of the case in South Africa, but we ask these questions because it's in the interest of this era in football and also it's governed by the statutes. I, I ask this because CAF has never seemed to have a bite, Lukolo. You see what happened in Kenya. You see what happened in Zimbabwe. Mm. It's not CAF that got in and said, guys, this is too much of a mess. Let's get it. It's always FIFA that. Uh, comes in trotting in and in inverted commas fixes football in those countries mm. i've never seen or heard of of, of calf taking that sort of stance mm. hence i ask yes sure. calf has written to safa calf has said hey what's going on there you know they've gone on some sort of uh you know trying to find what's going on mission and wait for you know safa to respond but to what end yeah i mean i a good point you're raising. I think it's also important to know that nothing FIFA does in the African continent without the uh, FIFA doesn't do anything without the knowledge and involvement of CAF. It's very clear, right? Uh, whether you're suspending a member, or you're putting normalization committee and so forth, it is with CAF. But they will play, as I said, a certain role, i.e. in sanctioning those things. Uh, the second aspect is, uh, not so long ago, there was a letter that Kev wrote in relation to, to Feka Food in Cameroon, exactly about the same thing. Not long ago, there was a letter that Kev wrote in Gabon about the same issues and a number of other countries. Um, so, and, 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 and not only that, uh, I mean, you saw the AFCON whereby s- when some member associations were found guilty of one issue or the other, there were serious sanctions mm-hmm. that were imposed on them. Uh, and so it's not necessarily correct, but I understand that in the past there has always been the perception of uh, bias or not bias. Actually, the, the the allegation that I thought people were going to make is like, ah, it's the country, it's, 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 it's Dr. Mutsepe's country, so is he going to do what he's doing to other countries as well? And he's been consistent. To other countries, he wrote letters, asked def- difficult questions. To his own country, uh, Kef does exactly the same thing. So maybe then people should say, okay, here's a leader. I'm not trying to say let's praise him all the time. I'm sure we must criticize him when there are things that are not necessarily correct. But there is consistency applied here. A uh, few months ago, allegations in Feka Food dealt with them the same way. Down the road, allegations in South Africa da- dealt with them the same way. And I hear you, but, uh, you know, Dr. Patrice Mutsepe does a, a very good job of, 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 of that balance. You know, yeah. he walks that beam to say, uh, I am not a South African president of CAF. I am yeah. the president of CAF, and all nations, all 54 of them under me, are all of equal scale. Yeah. But the aspersions of what South African football looks like are always going to be cast on him. Correct. That, 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 that is not something we can run away from. Not so true. therefore, South African football towing the line is important to Dr. Patrice Muzepe. I think, I think maybe let's look at it differently and say South African football um, that is focused on, on, on excellence, on results, and uh, focusing on the outcomes and, 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 and actually projecting a certain image is in, the, is in his interest. Just as much as um, that happening in Zambia, in Congo, in wherever it is. But I understand that there will be special, special focus. I, I have an appreciation of that view, that because he comes from this particular country, there's a certain expectation. Mm. I do somehow think that he's probably harder. I always think to myself, even me as a South African, he's probably more harder on me at Kef than anyone else, you know, because he's probably more harsher on me. But I understand why, you know. He, he, he wants so to you make think sure he's harder at Safa? I think, I, I, no, I, I'm not necessarily talking about the issue of Safa. Okay. Because I think with Safa, the, he is consistent. Well, it's not him who wrote the letter. He's a director of legal. But there's consistency. The approach to, 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 to what has happened at Safa is not different to what has happened to any other country. So, in my view, it's not a matter of softer or harsher. There is consistency. And maybe people appreciate consistency rather than anything else. I'm going to ask you quite a curveball of a question. Yeah. Is Dr. Mutsipe 
a great leader that puts you know um, the right people in the right places and is able to convince because we had to in this CAF yeah. convince the whole world that this is still one of the biggest tournaments in the world or is he a leader with the access to the amount of money where he can throw money at problems yeah yeah, you know, I, I mean, before I worked with uh, Dr. Motsep, I had a different perspective of who he was, you know, and I've had completely different appreciation now of, of, of who the person is. If you look at the board of directors at CAF, we had a board of directors meeting last week in Cairo, and I look around the table, um, the average age is 45. That's, that's, that's it's, a different place of it's, African it's, football it's, it's, that it's, compared it's to what we used to. eight of us. No, seven of us, right? Mm. Uh, plus uh, the general secretary, uh, Veron Mosengo Emba. And out of that seven... Four of them are all below 45. Four of those guys. It's, a, the it's, it's the not people. the norm. And, and, uh, and, and these are the people who are being trusted to run football. And I think the oldest out of that is probably 51, 52. Now, why am I saying this? I think it's a strength of a leader to pick the best people around. Innovative young people. Before, there was always this idea that the young Africans cannot necessarily do this job. The core team that was delivering AFCON is young people, mm. all of them below the age of 45. The people who are holding key roles. Now, I'm answering your question a bit differently in the sense that if you are able to identify the best horses to run this course, I think in my view, I mean, it's not up to me to, try to, to, to pass judgments on him. I don't think I'm objective enough to do that, right? We must judge people based on the promises they make and the outcomes of such promises. Purely, nothing more, nothing, more, nothing less. I want to take a quick break because when we come back, I want to focus it a little bit on, on, on South Africa simply because look all of September from writing about football in a little newspaper, and I, I say little in, 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 in ratio to where you are now, <laughs> you know, in ratio to where you were then and, you know, to people that read the Daily Dispatch, it's still a big newspaper, but in comparison to what you deal with now, from the Daily Dispatch to the SABC to FIFA, to the PSL and now CAF. I want to speak about leadership, particularly in this country. I mean, unconfirmed reports over the weekend uh, that I wasn't even going to touch on, but we're talking about the future, so I can. Dr. Evan Koss, who has served this country and this football, amazingly so. He's been an impeccable leader, and the direction is shown as a leader has made this country's football what it is. But he's not getting any younger. You've got Danny Jordan as well. Those are the two big points of leadership in this country. Let's discuss. It's the biggest platform for all things sport in South Africa. Every single day between 6 and 7, sports are amplified with Andile on the Mighty Metro FM, proudly brought to you by SABC Sport, a partner of CAF um, in, 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 in this last uh, Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, and, uh, amazing, you know, right? Yeah, every single game showed yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a game changer. I think, I think also AFCON wasn't just great for CAF, it was great for SABC. It really was. I think... It there's, really was. There's a certain. I mean, I hope Norm Sai and 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 and, 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 and don't kill me when I'm about to say. Uh, I, I think it has brought a little bit of the client back to trusting you. Not just they didn't trust you guys before. I mean, you, but you can a, say that. There's a certain level of, of affinity that has been created by Afcon for you. Let's guys. be honest about ourselves. I yeah. think that's the one thing. And I, I come on here, you know, mm. I come on here and I'm very honest about yeah. what we can do, who we are, and who we're not. Yeah. Um, and one of those things is we've had to win back. Yeah, Not only the trust. favor of the people. You remember when uh, Supersport didn't have the rights and we were to host and we're the only host in South Africa. You know, there was a lot of backlash to say, are they going to show every game? Are they even going to be able to do it? What is the panels going to look like? What is the presenting quality going to look like? And uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it went a long way to helping and, yeah. and assisting the SABC but, as well. That's the type of SABC people want. Uh, there was a period, I mean, I, I met this other executive the other day, and I know I'll go back to, I'm not running away from the points you want to raise. Who I met, and they said to me, you know, uh, football uh, is not commercially strong for us. And I said, man, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but I think the last AFCON has closed the debate. Yeah, put your money Closed in it, finished, done. Because I'm, I'm a rugby fan. But if you take the rugby World Cup final, the rugby World Cup final, the audience of the rugby World Cup final, You've got to times it by 10 mm. to get to the numbers that Bafana versus Nigeria. And this is not the final of the Africa. Yeah, this was just Bafana versus it Nigeria. It has to be times 10. 
Now, for me, I think there is no debate. But what has happened is there is prejudice and bias. Some of the people who make decisions have got a certain bias and preference because of the sports they watch and whatever it is. And I think the people who are also involved in football are doing a lousy job and were passionate about football in defending the story of football, not defending the personalities of football. Because I don't think we look at it I mean, people sometimes, I fight. The other day I was talking to the premier of my province, uh, Mr. Mabuyan, and I said to him, I don't like this thing that you guys say, football is social cohesion. It just irritates me. Because it's, it, it's, it's livelihoods. It's a commercial tool. Do you know what the, pro the biggest problem is? The face of football, you go to any presentation, you go to anybody that talks about football, the face of football is, you know, the guy carrying the, guy the loaf the of bread. Or the, the guy it's, it's, eating the... Yes, that is a pot of exactly. football as is. They know those people uh, uh, who are football lovers to the core are no different to the guy wearing a macarapa with beer coming out of it. But I, I, I tell people... No I mean, different. The, there's, a, there's a lady from Nigeria called Chimamanda and goes the idea. She, she says the danger of a single story is that it's, you know, it, 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 it describes people as one thing and one thing only. Mm. That's what has happened. I mean, the guy who's carrying a, a loaf is a football fan. But so is the guy sitting in the street but who Nomsa paid here, who's a group CEO... Uh, Nom Shaveri, who's a group CEO, is a crazy football. I'm not going to mention the club she supports. No one is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Nom you pay my bills. I'm quiet. I am very quiet. Look, look very quickly. I want to yes. go into this. And this is, you know, football conversations. We don't get to have as many as you. So when we do have you here, but these are also leadership conversations. Uh, I said a little bit earlier, and uh, I'm yet to have him on the show, and I've been trying to, to speak about this very matter. But I think mm. when Lucas Khatebe is ready to he will come on and we'll have that conversation. Mm. Um, you know, even today, as we speak, you know, there's people throwing the, 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 the name into the hat. Yeah. Because we've had great leaders, some great, some not, and it really doesn't matter in this conversation, but we've had leaders that we need to now, I don't want to say replace, but to grow from. Because you can never really replace a Dr. Irvin Cos. No. You know, but we can grow from where he planted we can we, we 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 can further, you know, move uh, the bulletin a little bit further up. Leadership in South Africa when it comes to sport. Where are we? We've got two huge positions mm. that need to be filled mm. in, in in the near future. We've got a country that needs direction, that needs a little bit of youth. We've seen with the Afcon now that it, 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 it is youth that will drive it because it, it's not the same anymore. It's yeah. not black and white, uh, shoot a game, put it on television. Sure. It's a lot more. I think, you know, um, when Kaiser Mutawung from Kaiser Chiefs, I think he was in his late 20s, right? Um, when Dr. Koza got involved in football, he was in his early 20s. And when he became more involved in a leadership of football in his 30s. When Dr. Mutsepe bought Sundowns, I think he was just 40. 40, yeah. You know, um, when Jomo Sono brought Kumar Cosmos and ran it, he was in his mid-30s, right? Still playing. Now you look at the, the people, my age group and my generation, um, sitting on the sideline and, and waiting for someone else to hand us over them these, these type of responsibilities or whatever it is. My view has always been this, uh, because you're not going to jump on... I don't necessarily think everyone must come here and say indicating... Um, the, the, the approach is what are the problems of the future that we can see and anticipate? And what is the type of leadership that we need to solve these problems? And I think as South Africans, we know our problems right now in football, in rugby, in whatever it is. Now, we have to identify these people, the best amongst us, because we don't, I mean, the, 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 the problem that is going to happen is that we're going to have a lot of average guys coming in and raising their hands. They are bold enough, they are loud enough, and they can shout slogans, and boom, they are there, and we get frustrated because it's accidental leadership, right? So I think the debate, I mean, it's up to my generation, by the way. Uh, by my generation, I'm talking about a 10-year age group back and forth. Uh, that has to decide uh, this thing. And, and I don't think it's fair when people expects the people who've done so much in the last 20 years and so on to be the ones who still going to think and talk about the future. Mm. I, I think the debate has to be amongst my, pe my, my guys and my peers and, uh, and have this honest debate and identify the best people who are going to be suitable, not necessarily for what we want, but for the problems of today and the future. Can somebody who comes 
from a business point of view who is a lover of football in the same way that Dr. Patrice Mutsepe was in his 40s when he got into football. Um, you know, he was a lover of football. Yeah. His father was a lover of football yeah, yeah. before him. Does it need to be a football person? And by football person, I mean a person who's brought up in football to come run suffer. Or can it be a business person with a business acumen who's got a good understanding of business and football? I think the question is, it depends, right? Because uh, there is sometimes a false notion which I listen to. Sometimes people say, yeah, you know, get independent people to run football. I think at the moment there is a sport, I won't mention its name, that is run by a fairly independent board and has been in trouble for the last four years, right? Um, nothing isn't really improved there. So that debunks that. Uh, I always think if you've got a skin in the game, you've got interest in a particular thing, your application is different in, in, in that. Uh, now, I think, that for me, we have to think harder about the, and look at the different types of people that are there and not oversimplify and say we are looking for a business person. I don't think people must regard Dr. Mutsep as a business person because he's owned a football club before KF for 20 odd years. Mm. So he's been a football person forever who just happens to be in business and so on and so forth, right? So I, I think the question is, <laughs> the people, look, look, look around the people that are there. And then we talk about the future based on the problems that we think exist for the future. It's I'm exactly. not trying to be cryptic to you. No, no, I mean, as I was to say, you, you did a very good job of not answering me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I, I look forward to this debate in the future, but I think... But I the mean, future is now, Lugolo. Yeah. The future is now. Yeah. With, with what's happening at Safa, with, with, with the situation, with the future is now. Yeah. Are they capable leaders in South Africa? You don't have to mention names for me. Yeah. You don't have to. But right now, we have an issue in the next two to three years where we need to look elsewhere for leadership. <laughs> and, and and I completely understand, you know, people who are as credible as what you are with the World Cup coming up, I can imagine you're going to be sitting in big seats at FIFA. Um, <laughs> you know, us small fries here might not be big enough for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the question is always... Um, <laughs> I'll answer you. Can I answer you the way I want to Please answer Please do. You? I, I think it's always important for people to have a reflection. And I do think the membership of CAF had a reflection before appointing uh, Dr. Mutsepe to bring a strategic direction, different direction. Now, I don't necessarily want to get involved in the SAFA politics and the PSL and whatever and so on and so forth, but I purely talk, purely looking at my own generation and what is happening, right, going forward. I, I think there has to be more meeting of minds, alignment of thoughts, and meeting to discuss things intentionally about where we are and what we are doing and looking outside because you can't look internally too long because the world is moving quickly and faster and the things are changing dynamically. So we have to find these types of people and I think they exist. Nicola, I'm gonna, I know you've got to go, so please stand as I say this, but I look forward to 10 years from now. Yeah. Five, no, 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 maybe <laughs> five to 10 years from now yeah. when somebody who's got the skills from a journalistic point of view, the skills from a broadcast point of view, the skills from an organizational point of view at FIFA level, at CAF level, the administrative skills from a PSL point of view, the media liaison skills and the communication skills from across the continent and the world to lead us. Because a good friend of mine once said, let the best among us lead. And I think that speaks volumes of you i think one day when you are ready when you feel and think that it is time i will vote <laughs> every day for you i'm glad you're not voting <laughs> 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 I, I think Andile, on my, my parting shot is um the question of leadership is so serious and must be answered sober uh, i think football in south africa is one of the most amazing thing owned by us the african people and, 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 and I'm sure the, 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 the current situation might give us a little bit of anxiety, but the future is bright. I look forward to that bright future. The goal of September, ladies and gentlemen, um, a leader par excellent. It's exactly 1853. Uh, look on September, he's out the building, uh, but very quickly, Tavik, he ate your time not answering us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I, uh, but he's a great person. He, he really is. And yeah. I think uh, in what he's saying, there's two leaders that he mentioned 
And I think women have done so great mm-hmm. um, on, 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 on this continent. He mentioned Namsa, who is our boss here. He mentioned Keletso, who's also the head of sport here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we say there's a vacuum in leadership, but I think that's because guys are talking about other guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're looking at the men and they're looking around and saying, yeah, between us, my jitar plom memo, maybe you, 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 and you. Yeah. You know, this place, the SABC, mm-hmm. has not been what it is now. Mm-hmm. I've been here almost 12 years. It has not been what it's been now since I've been here at least. Yeah. Until there was this leadership yeah. of women. Great leadership. You know what I mean? So perhaps, perhaps sometimes, uh, you know, what's that English saying about the nose? You look everywhere for something that's right under your nose. Yeah. Talk to me. Um, Soccer Zone is going to be carrying a lot of what you've got. Gonna be, we're going to be showing it visually. We're going to be going through it, drawing lines and you know, being very specific. But give me one. Uh, let me start with the one that impressed me so much this past weekend. It's uh, T.D. Somkwanans. The referee was doing Pirates and uh, Hungry Lion. Uh, he stopped the game uh, when Makaola was down. He, when he went there, I could see him communicating with him. Boom! Makaula is unconscious. So for one referee would have thought that uh, Makaula, there's nothing. Uh, these days, there's, these diseases that come from nowhere that, uh, you know, can, you know, spoil the game or even lead to death. So I want to uh, congratulate uh, Utsidi Somkwanas for his great job. I don't know what instinct told him that stop the game. And he did exactly that and the life was saved because we don't know what could have happened. The, 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 the boys from Hungry Lions, they went and had their team talk when the Shield was being formed by the Orlando Pirates player. They're under no obligation, of course, to do anything, right? Yes, and initially... It's- Initially, uh, it didn't look serious, but you could see the referee communicating with Macaul. And then within seconds, uh, the pain escalated. So uh, only the one who was close by uh, reacted. But majority of them went to speak to their coaches because they never saw anything serious, even ourselves. But when the, the other players and the referee reacted, we could see that something serious is, is happening there. Galaxy versus Cheaper United, Stellenbosch versus Supersport United, Tugs versus Sundowns. It's a Pretoria Derby, that one, and Amazulu versus Orlando Pirates. That is the draw for the quarterfinals of the NetBank Cup. Let's take your calls and perhaps your text as well. All right, here we go. Here we go. Call Metro FM now on 0860-002160. Drop us a voice note on 60 752 Waking up. Waking up. Man United beating Liverpool was exactly what we needed and especially the comeback, you understand? Just to shut these loser pools down because <laughs> like I'm so happy although I stopped watching Man United games because I just feel like my mental health comes first 100% but yeah, I'm so happy Man United <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, let's take the calls. Uh, Timmy, uh, we've got uh, people on the line. I'm not sure, but uh, just take one more voice note. Hey, Brandy. Hey, that one. I'm going to game between Manchester United and Liverpool. What a game. I'm going to play a game. I'm going to play a I'm going to play a game. I'm to play a game. And then with the Jordan. Then Jordan, yeah, and I must do the right thing and resign. I say one day, man. So it's kala ngomuntu mu yuan, kala ngomuntu mu yuan. Tala ba ila le mani le andi le wong ngomuntu opu magusa for resign. O kala ngama ngama fans lawa o then Jordan ngao sebenzi sega se he must resign andi tumsani la wamsanga empu malanga pay. Let's go to David. David is arranging for Lenny. David. Oh, thank you for taking my call. I would like to be short. Mm. In short, I want to plead with Mr. Jordan to do what is right and just uh, refuse himself. But 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 and, uh, isn't he, but, but, but surely David, but surely David, he is owed a, a trial as well. He is owed his day in court, if so be it. Um, don't you think? Don't you think he he's owed to to to, to face these allegations and, and and prove them or disprove them before we even go there? I yeah, we can say that. But uh, I, you know what, Mr. Jordan is uh, uh, that his own grave because you know he's always entertaining squabbles. I think uh, he has a good reason if he goes. And I, I would like also to revisit the topic that he said: um, a new leadership. That's the best way to do. But don't forget, there was an expatriate called Mr. Philip who, who, who resigned twice, and Safa had some some people in Safa. And some people 
people in PSL, they were opposed to him uh, being a foreigner or, or things that caused. Same to the Norwegian who replaced him. You remember how Omar Fez came in? No, 100%. I'm with you, David. But like I said, that we need is, to be short because I, I need yeah. to take one more. But uh, you make some good points there. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Bonkos, I think it is, yeah? Without anything any time, put on mm. uh, my brother in a new role, he's doing a fantastic job, you know. So I saw him uh, against uh, Chippa United, I saw him against Amazul, I saw him against Marisberg. The killer pass is my brother. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, uh, that second goal um, was courtesy of Bongani. When he yeah, played it to Lodge, and Lodge just uh, sank it there. So it's that role, defensive role, which is seeing him play a lot more games as well. Sure. For myself and Tavik, let's go to television. Let's go speak a lot more football, local football in particular, a little bit of Premier League and uh, Hollywood Bet Super League as well with uh, Lulu as well as Lompo Kekana today. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Let's Bella do Bella. And so. Bella.